Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Professor Barlow Damagradichin of the Armenian Studies Program. I'd like to welcome you to this presentation that is part of the Armenian Studies Program Fall 2021 Lecture Series. After this presentation, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions to Dr. Manukian using the chat area of Zoom. I'd like to introduce our, our guest this evening. Uh, Dr. Suren Manukian is the Kazan Visiting Professor in Armenian Studies at Fresno State. And he's been doing this for the fall semester. And he's teaching also a course called Introduction to Genocide for our, our students. He is the head of the UNESCO Chair on Prevention of Genocide and Other Atrocity Crimes at Yerevan State University, and is also the head of the Department of Comparative Genocide Studies at the Armenian Genocide Museum Institute in Yerevan. Uh, he has given three, uh, two previous lectures, and in the first two lectures, he covered the topics of the architects of the Armenian Genocide, the top-level perpetrators, and in his previous lecture on October 15th, he covered the second lecture, Bureaucrats of the Armenian Genocide, the Mid-Level Killers. I wanna first thank uh, Dr. Manukian for this uh, three-part series and to thank him for uh, teaching at Fresno State and uh, enjoyed his class and his lectures very much. He's tonight going to speak about the ordinary killers of the Armenian Genocide, the lower level perpetrators. And this is the, uh, we'll, we'll cover the story of the ordinary murderers who participated in the 1915 uh, massacres and genocide. Uh, and this pretty much uh, shows how the implementation of genocide is impossible without the large participation of uh, the masses of the people. That's almost every group of society which took part in this process. So thank you, Dr. Manukian, and I'm gonna hand it over to you. And after, the, after his presentation, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions in the chat and uh, to move on from there. So thank you, and Dr. Manukia. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Barlow, for, for introducing me and for, for, for having me in, in this uh, series of, of presentations. Uh, it's, it's very exciting to, uh, to be here and, and uh, share my, my thoughts, my, my finding, findings of my research uh, to this audience. And um, as you uh, mentioned, uh, we discussed uh, first two uh, levels of this hierarchy, this pyramid, let's say, of perpetrators in the time of Armenian genocide. But we should remember that uh, uh, genocide is, uh, first of all, man-made event. And uh, uh, genocide is something that uh, concerns human beings. And this... Uh, these um, are human beings who uh, kill other human beings, and uh, um, today's uh, uh, our today's uh, um, talk is about so-called ordinary or common uh, murders of, of uh, the Armenian genocide. Um, let me share my 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 screen. Uh, uh, so, um, speaking about uh, the, uh, this uh, hierarchy, um, uh, those who, who uh, uh, were uh, present in my uh, previous uh, presentations uh, already uh, know that, uh, that uh, uh, chart. And uh, um, on the lower level, uh, of this chart uh, of the lowest uh, lowest uh, level of the extermination uh, uh, were the ordinary murderers who participated in the killings or the process of uh, the implementation of genocide, advantaging of the atmosphere of uh, impunity, entertaining the general uh, general uh, uh, popular popular uh, support. Um, and uh, uh, this uh, usage of non-regular forces to, to carry out the dirty job uh, was a well-set uh, Ottoman tradition. Uh, although the regular forces participated in many instances of carrying out the genocide of Armenians, they were rarely used to exterminate whole communities. 
um, we discussed uh, the, the involvement, uh, the participation of army, uh, the participation of police and uh, uh, gendarmerie, but it was sporadic, uh, let's say, uh, participation, commitment of, of crimes, and it was the irregular forces which became a real tool in implementing the state pol police. Um, uh, the, the decisive role in the perpetrate in the perpetration of uh, um, the Armenian genocide was played by uh, this organization, uh, Teshkilate Mahsusa, the special organization, uh, and this structure was assigned uh, to exterminate the deported Armenian population as well as to coordinate the activities. Uh, of all the involved, uh, all the involved organizations. Um, there are many interpretations uh, of the emergence of the organization. Uh, however, it's not our our topic today. Um, uh, however, it's it's clear uh, though uh, uh, that up uh, that uh, up until First World War. Um, uh, it, it, it operated under control of uh, Minister Enver, uh, War Minister Enver, and was influenced by pan-Islamic and pan-Turkic -pan ideologies. Uh, in the course of its existence, this special organization uh, had three leaders, uh, uh, Suleiman Askeri, Ali Bashkampa and Hussein uh, Hussamettin er, uh, Erturk. Uh, and interestingly, uh, all of them were uh, Turkishian uh, or Northern Caucasus ancestries. Um, and uh, by the way, Turkishians have been widely represented also in, in, in other top uh, positions of uh, the special organization, but the real uh, head of the organization, however, was uh, Behaidin Shakir. Um, as early as in uh, 1914, uh, Behaidin Shakir traveled to Erzurum with uh, uh, other Turkishian Hussein, uh, Hussein Husni with the purpose of forming armed group uh, groups in uh, Armenian provinces, and later he would coordinate the activities of the special organization uh, by touring on his automobile to regions, uh, as well as uh, by, by means of encrypted uh, telegrams. Uh, Nazim, um, another functionary at the time of Armenian genocide, also played a big role in the organization. Um, the Teshkilate Mahsusa had four major tasks, four major uh, goals. Uh, those were uh, the organization of disarmament of the Armenian population, organizing of accompanying uh, detachments, uh, which were supposed to carry, out, to, to carry out the deportation and extermination of the population, organization of detachment for the extermination of the Armenian population in the deserts of, of, of Syrian uh, and concentration camps, and supervision and coordination of civilian authorities in vilayets, in, in provinces, in the organization of the Armenian genocide. Um, so all, all these goals uh, were very instrumental in implementation of Armenian genocide. Teshkilate Masusa had one central and four regional units, and the unit responsible for the Eastern Vilayets was intended for the coordinating the pan-Turkist uh, and pan-Islamic propaganda in the rear of Russia. Uh, however, the perpetration of the Armenian massacres became its main function. In the Eastern provinces, the supervision of um, this function of the special organization was assigned to the Valley of Trapizon, uh, Jemal Azmi, um, the Valley of and the Valley of Erzurum Tassid Bey, um, uh, a member of, of the Etihad Central Committee behind Din Shakir, as well as Dr. Fuad Sabit Bey. For so this, these uh, persons were uh, uh, this this inner, uh, inner uh, circle of. Uh, um, 
that uh, mastermind it, uh, the activities of special organization. The directives uh, in Teshkilate Masuse were mostly communicated verbally, and this is very important. Um, uh, and uh, the correspondence was, uh, and even in the cases that they, they were written, the correspondence, uh, correspondence was destroyed immediately after reading. Uh, the organization had strict disciplinary rules and uh, used the cipher code uh, of the Ministry of Inferior for correspondence. Uh, nevertheless, Tertilate Masuse was only a body in the implementation of decisions. Uh, it has some, but how, however, it, it had some jurisdiction which allowed for sending instructions to, to local bodies in organizing deportations and killings to control uh, their activities and reporting. The valleys, the Kaimakams, the, the local uh, rulers uh, um, and the agents of uh, Itihad were to abide by the requirements of the special organization. And many of them were its members, the members of the special organization, which significantly simplified the implementation of the task. But at the same time, we should remember that um, some tensions regularly arose uh, between Teshkila Temasus and other structures. For example, army, because it was time of war and um, uh, army uh, well, had uh, the dominant uh, position in these regions. And uh, uh, army units uh, every now and then would refuse to provide uh, supporting forces because they said they served to uh, the commander in chief alone uh, or would refuse to comply with orders received uh, uh, from the channels of the special organization. In such cases, the orders were sent by Ministry of War. Um, and these relationships would uh, regularly become extremely tough. Uh, one such example, very interesting example, was in the case of the commander of the Third Army, Mehmed Vahib, who had planned to even to detain uh, Behaid in Shakir. And it was only with Enver's um, interference that the decision was uh, derailed. Uh, and executive secretaries, we, we uh, talked about them um, in our last presentation, um, in our previous presentation, executive secretaries closely communicated with Teshkila Temasuse uh, in, in one of document um, that was um, sent by special organization to the Central Committee of Itihad of the Young Turkish Party proves that the secretaries were responsible for the forming of mobster groups uh, in the regions and the telegram points that the uh, actions were undertaken by the executive secretary of, uh, of Samsung, uh, Rushtu, who had, um, who had uh, formed groups uh, in the area he controlled. Um, uh, and um, uh, after, after these uh, groups were formed, uh, the groups uh, were to uh, then sent to the capital to be trained as militaries um, and then be commissioned with uh, assignment to, uh, to the Armenian um, to the Armenian villas. Interesting, uh, interestingly, uh, the correspondence took place through the general secretary of Itihad, uh, Mihdad Shukru. So here we see how, how uh, intervened uh, this uh, special organization, Teshkilat Masus, was in, in the, the party structure, in the structure of, structure of uh, uh, young Turkish party. Um, the numbers of, of uh, people included in the detachments uh, of the organization regularly changed uh, per, per each assignment. Um, and uh, these groups were mostly formed by Kurdish tribes, uh, by um, immigrants from uh, the Caucasus and the Balkans, uh, again, uh, so-called Turkishians, uh, as well as criminals who were released from prisons upon the degree of the Minister of Interior. And this is one of the features, one of the characteristics of Armenian genocide. We don't see other, other examples, we don't see such examples in other genocides than criminals 
uh, people who were um, uh, uh, who, who were sentenced uh, to uh, some uh, time of imprisonment were released from were set free from from prisons to organize uh, uh, to, to to participate in in commitment of, of genocide genocide. Um, and uh, these mob groups uh, were known as savages and uh, criminals, even among young, young Turk officials. And in this correspondence, we see this very, very clearly. And um, uh, Aram Antonian, for example, um, uh, argues that uh, uh, units comprise of, of Balkans, um, Balkans, Muhajirs, Balkans, immigrants, uh, immigrants. Um, uh, stood out of their remarkable hatred toward Christians and cruelty, um, which were guided by the feeling of revenge against Armenians. Although the latter uh, had little, if any, relation to the to their sufferings, uh, uh, um, to, to sufferings Balkan Muslims had undergone before, and. Uh, um, Groups uh, were also formed from multi-ethnic communities of Muslims, which had earlier moved to the Ottoman Empire and which were uh, commonly known as uh, Turkishians. And uh, one such detachment was led by Turkishian Ahmed, uh, who killed um, uh, two prominent uh, uh, to, to, to Armenian members of Ottoman parliament, Grigor Zorab and Vartke Seringulian. Um, and uh, in, the, in the neighborhood of, of uh, Dayarbekir. And uh, uh, the massacres of the Armenians who uh, had found uh, refuge in the desert of Terzor in 1916 were also perpetrated by Chetes comprising, comprised of Chechens and Arabs, uh, which were organized uh, by the governor of Derzor, uh, Salizek. Uh, Salih is the, the monster, Heresh Salih, as, as he uh, is known uh, in, in Armenian memoirs and uh, writings of Armenian survivors. Uh, and um, uh, uh, Turkish historian Suad Parlar mentions that Teşkilat Masusa had already started organizing groups of volunteers from the Balkans and the Caucasus, as well as prisoners serving uh, sentences for grave offenses even before the decision of deportation was made public. And Constantinople received uh, uh, several complaints after the assaults uh, this group organized against delays. Um, uh, and uh, um, there is an interesting, uh, interesting example, uh, interesting case of uh, Fali Rifki Atay, who was the personal assistant to Jamal Pasha, uh, he, he has an, an, an interesting recollection of the conversation he had with uh, Nazim, Dr. Nazim, as, um, uh, as he approached him, uh, expressing the willingness, willingness to, um, uh, to join the homeland defense units he had heard uh, were uh, being formed. Um, and uh, hearing the request, Atai recalls, Nazim responded with a faint smile on his face, saying those detachments are made of criminals and murderers, and uh, there is no place among them for a young man like you. And um, so uh, Rifki Atai writes that I didn't get uh, anything about uh, this uh, army of murderers. Um, the Chetes uh, in Erzurum were formed under uh, uh, Behaid in Shakir as Islamic police in, uh, in, 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 in August 1914. And um, uh, uh, it's interesting, we have the telegram addressed to the Mutasari for Erzinjan, Kaima Council of Baibur, Terchan, and uh, um, uh, included uh, uh, the names of those who were responsible for the um, uh, establishment of the Chetes, uh, ordering to start secretly and silently and to always report to the results. Um, the mobsters in the mountains uh, uh, of Rize were openly offered to join the special organization, uh, which had already did, uh, which they already did, uh, already did, and uh, uh, Kurdish Ashirets uh, were uh, to 
uh, involved in the process. Uh, um, and um, here is um, uh, the photo of these uh, Kurdish tribes. They were, uh, they had their uh, uh, prototypes in uh, Hamidia detachments created in the time of Abdul Hamid and very instrumental in the time of Hamidia massacres. Um, and uh, he wrote, Hilmi, the superintendent of the party uh, in Erzurum, wrote about one of the Kurdish chief uh, Ashurets. The time is about to come to deal with the problem uh, we talked about in Erzinjan. I want 50 brave uh, men from you. I shall prepare everything for their convenience here. Never mind if they are young or middle-aged men, as long as they are strong and determined and willing to sacrifice their lives for their country and nation. Um, upon first notice from us, put them on their way. Only be prepared and keep behind in uh, Shakir Bey Effendi informed. Um, and um, yes, Kurdish detachments uh, uh, played a colossal role in exterminating Armenians in the Eastern Villets. Um, what, and uh, of course, one precondition for that was the nearly total equipment of the Kur Kurds, especially as uh, with the um, annihilation of the Armenians, the Kurds would free a territory they had long been uh, aspiring. Um, and uh, that is the reason the Kurds would mostly attack villages and kill the population rather than deporting them. And good-looking good women and young girls were forcibly sent to harems, and the, and the villages were uh, oftentimes uh, sent, uh, set to, to fire. Um, carrying out... Um, and so Teshkilate Masuse and Kurdish detachments were... Uh, the main, uh, let's say, forces, the main uh, forces on ground um, uh, who were involved in, in implementation of the Armenian genocide. But um, uh, we should uh, remember that carrying out um, uh, genocide is impossible without large participation of masses. Um, uh, the number of, of participants to the killing uh, in different genocides depends on uh, um, um, on the technology of murder, uh, for example, in the time of Holocaust, uh, big yes chambers were used in concentration camps. Uh, but uh, if we compare uh, the Holocaust with the Armenian genocide, of Rwandan genocide, in later uh, genocides we see we see more face-to-face -face killings, and so. Uh, this uh, industrial killing against face-to-face uh, uh, -face killing gives us uh, the, uh, that the more, more and more me people uh, had to be uh, involved in this, uh, in this process. Also, the, site of the, the size of the victim group, victims group, uh, their dislocation, uh, were they concentrated in one place or they were dispersed throughout the territory of the state, um, uh, as well as uh, the level of resistance. And um, the, another important thing, the decision on involving big numbers of people in the process of carrying out genocide um, depends on political purposes. In their actions, the initiators of genocide must have uh, support and get it by letting various groups of society satisfy their needs and wants. By involving big groups of population in the system of killing, um, in the system of uh, killing, the forces launching the crime create stronger ties between the criminal society and the regime. Uh, so it's a very good uh, method to, to, uh, to consolidate society. At the same time, uh, the shared responsibility with the all population of uh, the state. Um, and um, uh, so two components shall be in place, ensure um, the, the, the participation of the population in, uh, in genocidal acts. Planning, and we see this planning in, in the first two levels, and enthusiasm. Uh, authorities, 
plan to process uh, of the killings and ensure their coordinated implementation, encouraging at the same time the formation of an atmosphere required for the masses participation in uh, particip mass participation of the population. To achieve that, uh, the authorities rely on spreading rumors um, instigating talks uh, of the imminent danger, reactivating deep and subconscious superstition and, uh, and exploit other means, just uh, help justify the crime um, and put the responsibility from the true perpetrators to the uh, objectified, um, the frenzied uh, mass of nameless people. Uh, the situation that an individual turned into minor part of the major crowd is uh, scrupulously described in uh, French sociologist Gustave Le Bon's uh, um, The Crowd, The Study of uh, Popular Mind uh, uh, in, in this, uh, in this uh, research. And genocide, uh, we should remember that genocide is a group action. Uh, criminals are members of group whether big or small, or parts of crowds. And um, according to Le Bon, uh, the crowd can be described as, um, um, as uh, impulsiveness, irritability, uh, 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 in, cap in uh, capacity to, to reason, the absence of judgment and of critical spirit, the exaggeration of uh, sentiments and others besides which are almost um, uh, always observed in, in being belonging to inferior form of, of evolution. And in a crowd, personalities are diffused into the collective mind, which makes them feel, uh, think and act in a manner quite different from that uh, um, in which each individual of them would feel the uh, think or act were he in a state of isolation. Um, and uh, Libon also points that by the mere fact that he forms part of the organized crowd, a man descends uh, several ranks in the ladder of civilization. Isolated, uh, he may be a cultivated individual, in the crowd, he is barbarian, that is creature acting by instinct. In other words, the actions of the members of the group become more sim uh, simplistic, more emotional, and eventually more antisocial. Uh, over times, the perpetrators of the Armenian genocide are pictured as, as, uh, as uh, zealous barbarian. Uh, 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 and it's not only uh, Armenian phenomenon, um, but, uh, uh, and, uh, and, you know, the, 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 this gives uh, some metaphysical nature to uh, the committed crime. Um, the same concern was presented, as I told, in interpreta interpreting and presenting the Holocaust. Um, however, uh, it changed to, uh, and in this photo, for example, you can see uh, in, this, in this slide, you can see uh, two banners. Uh, displaying uh, uh, Nazis, uh, Soviet uh, Soviet placard of the time, and Western media, and presenting Nazis and and uh, um, perpetrators of Armenian genocide. And yes, they were presented in uh, survivor memoirs in in the media as barbarians and vampire vampires and monsters and lun lunatics deranged to um, uh, to human blood, to blood of their victims. However. Uh, this uh, miscon misconception, let's say, um, uh, changed to a certain degree after the, the uh, publication of the book uh, Eichmann in Jerusalem, a book of philosopher and political thinker Hannah Arendt. Uh, Hannah Arendt uh, participated, uh, she, she attended uh, uh, the, the, the trial um, of um, uh, this man, Adolf Eichmann, who was one of the organizers of um, the um, uh, Holocaust. Uh, he was a person who was responsible for logistics of um, uh, to transfer uh, Jews from ghettos to concentration camp and the, the implementation of uh, extermination of Jews in concentration camps. And Hannah Arendt um, uh, 
participated in this trial um, and uh, he called Nazi criminal Eichmann the embodiment of the banality of evil um, and described him as an ordinary and common personality. Eichmann was not a madman. Uh, moreover, Eichmann was certified by, uh, uh, by uh, specialists, by, by, by physicians as normal. And Arendt argued that the terrifying thing about Eichmann was not, was not how unusual or how sinister he was, but the understanding of his extreme uh, ordinariness. Now, therefore, it can be stated that in the terms of Holocaust and the Armenian genocide or other genocide, the criminals to a great degree were hundreds of thousands of or even millions of common people who took millions of lives. Of course, they were uh, those with mental disorders among them. However, the big number of the participants does not allow connection, connecting the carrying out of genocide with individual conditions, educational level or social origins of the murderers. And all uh, stratas, all, 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 all sectors, all groups of society participated in uh, in um, the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, Armenian genocide. And here, um, let me bring uh, some examples to show uh, the scale of participation. Uh, and this scale of participation was obvious even to the contemporaries of the event. For example, uh, British Admiral uh, Richard Webb, who was the assistant high commissioner of Constantinople during its uh, occupation, uh, he reported to British Foreign Office to punish all persons guilty of Armenian atrocities would necessitate wholesale execution of the Turks. So here we see the representation of uh, this um, the general population uh, of uh, the general participation of population of Turkey. Um, um, uh, Turkish officials again shared the opinion. For example, Ali Kemal, uh, later the Minister of Education of the Ottoman Empire, noted in a Sabah newspaper on January 1919, a crime unprecedented in scale, in scale was committed for. Uh, uh, was um, uh, was committed four or five uh, to five years ago, a crime which cost the all uh, of the world. Um, uh, if we want to make an impression on the scale and the terms of crime, we have to speak not of five or ten criminals, but the hundreds of thousands of them. Um, and um, another another. Uh, uh, example from Halil Menteshe. Halil Menteshe, who had been the chairman and the Ottoman parliament, and um, even some scholars call him the four in this triumvirate uh, the, uh, that uh, ruled the uh, uh, Ottoman Empire at that time. Um, he confessed in his memoirs, there were very few Turks who did not have relation to the deportation. So it, it shows this... Uh, um, the involvement of overwhelming uh, part of the society. And um, uh, uh, one of the specifics of uh, the Armenian genocide was uh, the nearly total participation of the Turkish, Kurdish, and Turkishian population in the massacres. And uh, uh, the Armenian genocide was perpetrated by the hands of hundreds of thousands of ordinary people who personally took millions of lives. And uh, you know, it's interesting, but this popular participation cannot be differentiated by gender and age. We see many examples in, in memoirs of survivors that um, those uh, recall uh, how Turkish and Turkish villagers of all ages and, and, and gender uh, circled, circled Armenian women and children and continued the Kivalik, even women. And participation of women and children in the in crimes 
uh, of course, is a separate topic in genocide studies. And there were many women members of the SS working uh, at the Nazi concentration and death uh, camps. The number of women involved in the genocide committing in, in, in Cambodia exceeded even men in the country uh, that uh, in its uh, entirely was turned into the actual concentration camp. And uh, tens of thousands of women served as order givers and guards or even participated in, in the killings. Um, uh, yes, and in the Rwandan genocide, we see a participation of uh, women, at least three of the main per perpetrators of the genocide in Rwanda were women, uh, the wife of assassinated president and two members of the government. And uh, Hutu women uh, participated, uh, joined the process of instigating the actual killing, looting and raping the Tutsi women uh, and uh, children. Another uh, group of um, uh, society that uh, again uh, uh, again joined the process of of of, uh, of uh, uh, massacring uh, uh, the victim group, um, and uh, uh, part of them was encouraged to do so, while others were forced in the committing crimes, and children were learning by watching scenes of murders and killing, uh, killings were turning into routine uh, ways to prove uh, loyalty to, to their uh, own uh, community. Um, and um, uh, for example, let me bring, uh, an, uh, yes, this um, example of, um, um, from uh, Admiral Mark Bristol, who was the High Commissioner of the United States to Turkey, between 1919, 1927, very pro-Turkish author and very anti-Armenian uh, official. But he described the extermination of the Christian population of Smyrna in a telegram sent to uh, the US Secretary of uh, uh, US uh, Secretary on uh, September 1922. Uh, several of the relief workers, um, as well as Vice Consul Barnes reported to me that there was a noticeable change in the temper of the Turkish people and, um, and uh, civilians uh, toward the Armenians. The impression uh, they received that every able-bodied Armenian man uh, was being hunted down and killed where, uh, where they found. Even small boys between uh, 20 to 15 years armed with, the, with the clubs were taking part in the hunt. And uh, it was not just isolated uh, example. Um, and uh, as, I, as I told, uh, uh, we can find many such examples in memoirs. And children participation was not spontaneous in every instance. Um, for example, following the military failures of Turkey during the Balkan war in 1920, Turkish authorities launched a full-scale program for national and paramilitary training of young Turkish population. Um, the bylaw of the Association for the Development of Turkish Forces, so-called Tur Turgucu uh, Gemeti, uh, created in 1913, had program for uh, preparation of young people, which has needed to make the nation that of soldiers again, uh, and to prevent that deterioration of the Turkish people. And uh, there were uh, other young groups too, which operated under the military of defense and were getting prepared to defend the homeland. And to achieve it, uh, the ministry provided rifles, bullets, and, and outfit. And the process were coordinated by Zia Gyokal, while the ideologist of the Armenian genocide um, and, uh, and uh, the Young Turkish Party. Uh, the League of National Defense was uh, also created in the course of the Balkan War. Um, and it was also aimed at providing military education. Uh, the founders of the League included party uh, and government leader, including Talat, uh, Enver, Said Halim, uh, Jamal, and Minister of Justice, Ibrahim. Um, and th this, the atmosphere of violence was an important precondition. Yes, in, uh, this is a very interesting postcard 
one of many such postcards uh, in the time of war. And here you can see children uh, in national uniforms, uh, Austro-Hungarian, German, Ottoman, and, and Bulgarian children uh, in this joyful representation of uh, uh, their uh, their national feelings in the time of war. Uh, so the atmosphere of violence was an important precondition to warrant um, popular participation. A proper atmosphere guarantees popular support for radical leadership and awakens the binary contradiction between us and them. Now, the war helps outline the adversary and make people per uh, perceive it as a danger and menace. Uh, involvement of masses in the uh, killing in the course of Armenian genocide took place through a number of concurrent and in intersecting processes. The state propaganda would picture Armenians as fifth column, uh, collaborating with them, uh, with them, uh, uh, adversary traitors responsible for all the defeats and misfortunes of, misfortunes of Turkey. This overt propaganda was um, spread through young Turks clubs and mosques and high level or, or of illiteracy and the traditional anti-Armenian public sentiments and stereotypes proved the efficiency of propaganda. The persistent stereotype of Armenian racial inferiority of Raya, uh, the slave population, uh, the popular treatment of Armenians as infidels or gavurs were further um, uh, nurtured by the rage of the population, inciting by the, by the uh, constitutional pr uh, provision, uh, which gave Armenians equal rights uh, with Muslim, uh, Muslims following the Young Turks revolutions of uh, 19, uh, eight, 1908. Um, uh, all the factors created the basis for the um, uh, ration, uh, rationalization of uh, mass engagement in killings. And ordinary citizens were given an opportunity to feel them as a part of the big cause uh, and the historical event. It's very, it was, it's a very interesting psychological uh, thing. Um, remote villagers in uh, villages in remote provinces uh, were told that they are by killing Armenians. It's not just pure killing; it's 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 part of a big cause, an historical event, uh, building a great Turan or uh, sal uh, saving uh, the 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 homeland. Um, and um, of course, here we have also materialistic uh, uh, impulses. And uh, um, it, it was chance to get possessions of the property of the victims. Um, and the population had achieved a total consensus in the system of values, which allowed for cons uh, conscribing uh, squads of future murderers from various groups of society. Um, and, um, um, here we can remember such uh, the, such processes in the time of Holocaust. Then, in Eastern Europe, the Poles of Lithuanians, Ukrainians, or other people, they also tried to revenge to to Jewish population and enthusiastically involved in, in the process of uh, of uh, extermination of Jewish communities of Eastern um, Eastern um, Eastern Europe. Um, um, so the attitudes of Turks toward uh, Armenians uh, um, uh, in the Ottoman Empire had much resemblance with the attitudes in the uh, German or other European societies. Given an opportunity, the majority of the Muslim population would realize its long-time desire, would organize atrocities and would, would massacre Armenians, especially when uh, there was the blessing of the religious leaders who declared jihad, a holy war against them, uh, against the infidels. Um, although the leaders of the young Turks were not, we should remember, they were not fervent religious Muslims, but they took the advantage of the announced jihad to raise the force inside the empire, feel the religious zeal against um, Christians. 
the is uh, and uh, um, many uh, the is with which uh, Turkish population took up the role is well described in in, in this uh, in in number number of instances, um, and um, so to to sum up and to conclude uh, my. Uh, to conclude my my presentation about this uh, lowest level of, of uh, um, the perpetrators of Armenian genocide, uh, you know there there is a widespread notion in Armenian society about who were responsible for the uh, Armenian for the uh, Armenian genocide. If you just walk uh, in the streets and, and ask uh, population in Armenia uh, to, to name the, the main uh, uh, the perpetrators of Armenian genocide, uh, you should uh, uh, find that uh, free names uh, were be uh, be called, and uh, the, this the images of free pashas, Talat, Ember, and Jemal depicted in in every textbook create a strong narrative of uh, perpetrators of the Armenian genocide. By, per by perpetration of uh, such an horrendous crime uh, as genocide is a more complicated, many faceted uh, event. And one point stands clear to understand the fundamental reality of mass murder. We need to shift our focus from abstraction such as ethnic conflict of national building. No, they're also important, but uh, we should, uh, we uh, uh, should shift, turn our um, um, our focus uh, or attention to real actors, to individuals who became direct implementers of this diabolic plan, and uh, the perpetration of genocide is a actively requiring a smoothly functioning mechanism of initiation, organization which we saw in the first level of uh, perpetrators, logistics, communications, um, which we saw in the middle level and carrying out uh, of murders, which uh, happened in, in this direct, uh, directly in, in the lowest level. And uh, in the killing hierarchy, together with planners and desk murderers or bureaucrats, the central ro ro role is given to direct perpetrators at the most basic uh, local level of society. The Armenian genocide, of course, was ultimately a state project, but its implementation was born not only by the state agencies, such as army or gendarmerie, but also by ordinary Muslims of uh, Western Western Armenia and Asia Minor, they were not. Of course, they were not national-born killing killers, but were socialized to mass murder through a variety of mechanisms: the tremendous state propaganda, the process of strong indoctrination, presentation of Armenians as exploiters, competitors, and by betray, uh, uh, betrayers, the um, betrayers, uh, rationalization. Uh, creation the rationalists for involvement in the in the violence development of Panturkis identity participation in salvation and homeland and involvement and pillage based on existing historical prejudice against Armenians Armenians as infidels as slaves and voiceless victims and the dehumanization. Um, giving them a half-human or non-human identity. These several factors, with the support of objective conditions such as war, First World War, frustration of uh, the military defeats of Ottoman Empire, and paranoia in Ottoman society created by catastrophic atmosphere of violence, um, created the, the catastrophic atmosphere of violence and involved the millions hundreds of thousands and millions of Muslim population of Western Armenia and Ottoman Empire in the enthusiastic perpetration of genocide. That's all for today. Thank you for, for your uh, patience and uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, ready to, to answer, to, to, uh, your, to respond to your, your questions. Thank you, uh, Dr. Manukian. Um, if you can unshare the screen and perfect. Yes. And then um, I will ask people to go ahead and to ask questions in the chat. 
uh, any questions that you have, and then we'll read them for uh, Dr. Manukian. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, overview, but also a very, very interesting conclusion to the three-part series on uh, the perpetrators of the genocide. So I'll start off with a, a, a question while people are, are, are writing in the chat. Um, in the way that you uh, portrayed the, the causes, the way that the government was able to mobilize the population to implement the genocide, it seems to me that that's very much a prototype for the modern modern concept of genocide. In, in, my question is, in genocide studies, comparative genocide studies, do people use the Armenian genocide as a prototype uh, in, that, in that concept? That it sounds like just what happened you know, in, the, in the 40s during the Holocaust and, and later. Um, yes, surely. And uh, um, there is a consensus among genocide scholars and uh, uh, thanks to the um, efforts of uh, pioneers of Armenian genocide scholarship of Bagen Dadrian, Richard Hovannisyan, and many, many others, uh, the Armenian genocide is uh, included in this uh, circle of, uh, let's say, main or most or total genocides. And um, yes, many scholars uh, use uh, Armenian genocide to show First of all, uh, the, uh, the basis uh, that were used by Raphael Lemkin uh, to outline the Genocide Convention, because if we look at the Genocide Convention in the genocidal acts, uh, uh, those uh, are singled out in this uh, convention, we can see a clear description of all acts committed in the time of, um, uh, of the Armenian Genocide. And of course, uh, Armenian Genocide and Holocaust were uh, two major, major events, uh, those uh, affected on the, um, uh, on the mind of, 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 uh, of on, on ideas of, of Raphael Lemkin to, to uh, describe um, them, uh, describe them. Uh, uh, genocide convention. At the same time, another interesting thing we should on, uh, always stress and I, I, I don't have time to have my four maybe uh, presentation about um, external external criminals or external um, uh, perpetrators of Armenian genocide. Here we can uh, speak about German complicity in the time of Armenian genocide. And it's interesting, we can see many uh, German officers, many uh, German military officials who served in the, in the Ottoman army in the time of uh, First World War because they were allies, Germany and Ottoman Empire were allies. Uh, and many of them later became very active members of Nazi party. Many of them who served in the time of Armenian genocide uh, in Armenian provinces and uh, uh, surely they, they, they uh, observed what happened with Armenians and they were sure with the uh, effectiveness, may, let's say, let's do this one, of such sol final solution. They, uh, maybe they, they advised uh, Hitler to, 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 um, to implement the same things, the same way of uh, extermination of the whole communities in the time of Holocaust. Uh, so we, we, we have this uh, interconnection between Armenian genocide and Holocaust and uh, yes, uh, and this mass participation, one, uh, uh, also one of the common features we can find in different main or total genocides, like an Armenian genocide, Rwandan genocide, and Holocaust. And if, if we speak uh, about the level of um, uh, uh, level of uh, research of, uh, in the Armenian genocide, we can, uh, we can uh, state, we can argue that uh, Armenian genocide, along with Holocaust and Rwanda, is uh, the most researched, let's say, uh, genocide uh, in, in genocide studies. So yes, Armenian genocide uh, has its, uh, its uh, uh, very, uh, very uh, big role, let's say, in genocide studies. Thank you. And uh, please go ahead and write your questions in the chat. And while you're again doing that, I, I want to just follow up with that and say then, that if, uh, if the goal of genocide studies, one of the goals of genocide studies is, is really the, the idea that by studying it, we can prevent it. But it seems to me that 
uh, this type of uh, propaganda is an early warning, right? So that, that scholars who study around the world different, what's happening in different countries, you can, you can see the process uh, advance yes. and that's an early warning for a potential trouble. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, thank you, Barlow, for this very important, very important remark. Um, yes, and uh, uh, fortunately now we see that international community and international organizations also um, uh, understand this uh, uh, very important uh, um, idea, their important uh, no, uh, idea that uh, genocide scholars uh, can be used in the system of prevention of genocide. And now um, I have many friends of mine, uh, genocide scholars who now uh, are working in different, let's say hot areas in the world, in uh, South Sudan, in Central African Republic, um, in places where we have the high level of, of, uh, um, uh, of um, uh, genocide, uh, 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 genocide threat, let's say risks, and uh, yes, studying genocides, we can we can understand, we can uh, learn from from previous cases how genocide uh, uh, unfolds because unfolds because genocide is not just abrupt, uh, abrupt. Uh, uh, phenomenon, abrupt uh, uh, event. It's not volcano, but of course, volcano also had uh, has uh, its uh, uh, its uh, natural and preconditions and and causes. But uh, we should know that uh, genocide is process. It's not just one event, and we we can observe uh, some critical points in uh, in. Uh, uh, in, in, in creation of, first of all, this atmosphere of violence and creation of genocidal society. Genocidal society is uh, uh, critical for, for uh, implementation of genocide. Uh, you need to have uh, societal consensus to implement genocide. Even if uh, uh, leaders of the state uh, have uh, uh, genocidal plans, it is impossible to implement their, their, their uh, decisions. It, it's, it, it's impossible to, um, to uh, perpetrate, to commit this crime without huge mass participation. And this huge mass participation is impossible without societal consensus. And uh, um, to create this uh, consensus in society, we should, uh, they should use uh, the organized architects of genocide. They uh, should use um, very sophisticated system of state propaganda, of hate speech, and they should boil this, uh, um, these feelings in society. And we have time, we, we always have time to stop genocide. Genocide is not inevitable. We can stop genocide just reacting in the very early stages of genocide. And uh, so I hope one day uh, uh, mankind or international community uh, will use more effective uh, tools for, for, for this. Uh, of course, there are some, um, some mechanism um, developed last years, last decades, this concept of responsibility to protect, these uh, concepts of um, uh, to, to observing of observance of, uh, uh, of uh, situation in different countries. And also uh, we have one of the, uh, among uh, UNESCO goals, uh, education on non-violence, education of tolerance, edu genocide education in, in uh, various universities also can be instrumental and important for prevention genocide. So there's a question uh, about uh, the studies. Uh, have there been studies about focused military training and preparation uh, regarding the special organization, the Teshkilata Masusa? Um, the, the problem with the Teshkilata Masusa, as I, uh, as I uh, told, uh, was that the, the secrecy of this organization. It was secret organization. It was not just a public uh, agency. And uh, as, uh, as consequently, 
uh, we don't have uh, much uh, material about uh, their everyday life, let's say, of this organization. And the main source of uh, to explore special organization is memoirs of members of this organization. And last decades in Turkey, many um, memoirs and uh, accounts of, of uh, uh, the members of Teşkilat-i Masus were, were, were published. And I think we are in the, this initial, let's say, steps to, uh, to explore uh, the everyday life and this uh, uh, creation and the process of organization and preparation of uh, the members of special organization. But uh, regarding to the uh, time of creation of this, uh, the date of creation of this organization, uh, uh, most scholars uh, think that uh, this organization was created in the time of Balkan War. So they had um, the um, experience of killing, let's say, uh, they, they got in the time of Balkan Wars and uh, in, in Bulgarian and uh, Serbian uh, uh, accounts, memoirs, and uh, in the works of Bulgarian and Serbian uh, historians, we can find uh, a lot of uh, examples of brutalities uh, uh, committed by uh, the Teşkilat Emasus in Balkans before the Armenian genocide. So they were already trained. Uh, they already knew how to kill uh, uh, and because we should remember that killing of ordinary, um, uh, the killing of women and children is not an easy job. Uh, killing, it, of course, in general is not uh, easy. And uh, uh, because of this psychological revulsion we have uh, against, against killing of human beings. But at the same time, we should remember how difficult it is to kill uh, um, just peaceful uh, population. And that's why you know, we should remember, that's why in uh, the time of Holocaust, this, this concept of concentration camps and concept of guest chambers was invented. It was not invented for efficiency or something else. First of all, the first goal of of, uh, um, of in, uh, introduction of this uh, in, uh, uh, development of um, guest chambers and killing Jews in guest chambers. Uh, the first the goal was to protect uh, German soldiers because German soldiers who participated in these mass killings in the initial stages of the Holocaust, they were they were finished. They uh, they had mental problems. They committed suicide, and German command decided that uh, uh, they would have uh, an army of of, of uh, insane people, uh, and uh, they developed this concept of uh, distancing of um, uh, killer from their victim by by. Uh, um, uh, involvement by, by development of this gas chamber system and industrial killing. And the same thing uh, was here. Uh, it was, uh, and uh, Teşkilat-i Masuse was instrumental not only in killing of people, but because they showed uh, the ordinary people who, who later uh, involved in the process of killing, how easy uh, the process of killing, how uh, uh, they could, uh, they can uh, kill hundreds and thousands of people in, in one spot. So they don't, not only kill, but they even trained other people uh, for, for killing. But uh, thank you, uh, Alan, for, 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 for beautiful question. Unfortunately, special organization is not very well uh, researched. Uh, and uh, first of all, as I told, because of lack of material, uh, but uh, I hope new, new, new findings and new uh, accounts of, of uh, the members of Teşkilat i Masusa. Of course, they are not objective and they, have, they are mostly subjective writings, but they, they would have us uh, to write uh, more about the special organization because indeed it was the central uh, force uh, um, the, in this uh, killing machine in the time of Armenian genocide. Yes, we have one uh, final question. It's it's really kind of a statement, but a question. So that Armenians did serve in the government and and for a while in the military, and so were in a sense respected or part of the government. Um, but how did the how did the government really was it able to really 
show that it, the Armenians were for them show that propaganda because it says uh, she says how many Turkish friends uh, who asked me why did the Armenians start revolting since they had high positions they were respected that's part of the propaganda is that what the the way the government was able to convince its population even though they knew that Armenians were had good positions some of them of course um, yes, uh, some of uh, Armenians had uh, state positions, but uh, they were, it was not a uh, common and uh, usual thing in Ottoman Empire. Uh, Ottoman Empire, as, uh, as every empire, uh, ancient empire, um, was um, uh, based on uh, the, um, uh, let's say, different, uh, on, on assigning different roles to uh, to different groups of population. And Armenians in the Ottoman Empire uh, had their niche, let's say, and, uh, and Christians, Greeks and Armenians, they developed imperial trade, imperial trade and, and uh, international, um, um, international uh, trade. They, uh, um, they uh, had in their hands all uh, the trade with European states, uh, and it was their job, let's say, it was their place in Ottoman Empire. After the, um, after the uh, um, re re um, restoration of constitution after the Young Turkish Revolution, um, uh, Armenians, uh, Armenian aspirations uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, to better their their positions in in Ottoman Empire was uh, were great, and uh, uh, Armenians tried to uh, to take all fruits, let's say, of uh, the um, reinforcement of the constitution of Ottoman Empire. But the Muslim deemed the possible reformed and possible equality of Armenian um, population unacceptable. Why? Because it was they had the history of ages um, of subordination, a domination of uh, Muslim community and subordination of of um, of uh, Christian population, and uh, that's why um, this uh, this change of uh, roles, let's say, of statuses in you know, of Armenian population of empire brought to uh, the hatred, the hostility of Ottoman in Ottoman community. And uh, so it was unacceptable that yesterday slaves uh, could be equal with the, the uh, with the traditional dominant elite of society. And uh, that's why uh, this this feeling was very, very popular in 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 Turkish society. But um, at the same time, if I'm if uh, I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, this question about nowadays Turkish uh, state, and it's uh, propaganda, state propaganda, uh, uh, portraying, Ar portraying Armenians as, uh, as the traitors uh, uh, and uh, accusing Armenians in treason in the time of First World War. Uh, we should remember that Armenian genocide has, Armenian genocide has, um, uh, Armenian genocide studies uh, encounters uh, this huge state uh, denial machine. And uh, it is a unique case. We don't have other case of state denial. In, of course, we have denial in other genocides too. And denial, denial is the usual, uh, let's say, companion of, of, of each genocide. But in Armenian genocide, we have this unique situation Then the resources, uh, the means and the, of uh, the state machine um, is... Um, um, is uh, involved uh, in uh, the process of deny, uh, in process of reconstruction of history, in, in process of recreation of image and uh, this uh, industry of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, creation of new uh, double history, let's say alternative history of 19, 1914, 1918, history of Turkey in the, in the time of First World War, it's uh, uh, industrious, industrial the denial, starting from the school years, then in all textbooks you can see 
uh, Armenians as uh, traitors, uh, Armenians as uh, um, traitors of uh, state stabbing back in the time of war and uh, through university, from financing uh, uh, researches in many Eastern and Turkish uh, uh, universities for, for denial of Armenian, uh, Armenian genocide. And yes, it's a big industry and uh, uh, they spent millions of, um, millions of dollars in uh, creation of this image. But even in this situation in Turkey, we have tens of or hundreds of thousands of Turkish citizens uh, who uh, in the age of uh, information, in the age of internet and social media, uh, they have all chances to, uh, uh, to touch with the true information about Armenian genocide. And that's why I think this informa information age with all, all its uh, uh, failures and, and flows uh, uh, gives us uh, a chance to, to spread our uh, truth uh, without spending uh, much, much money. Uh, and uh, so yes, Turkish state now is in the process of brainwashing uh, their population. But at the same time, uh, this concept of Armenian revolution uh, is not uh, uh, so is not uh, perceived uh, so uh, uh, seriously in uh, in in uh, the mainstream of, of genocide scholars. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mandukian. I'm going to stop the uh, 